the Western landscape is in itself a kind of fairy tale landscape. People have an actual psychological need to move into the world of the imagination. So I write books about people who are driven by external events, and that could be journeys, quests, they need to rescue someone. We're on my little cabin. It's a one-room cabin. I have about 32 acres and two horses and a donkey. People ask me, don't you get lonely up there? And I said, I'm living with, you know, 25 characters in every one of my books. But when I walk away from here, I need to get away from it absolutely and completely. So the horses take me away from this world of the imagination. One of the ladies I ride with, her husband has an ancestor in North Texas in the 1870s who rode around from place to place reading from newspapers that he had ordered from far distant places to crowds who were charged a dime apiece to come in and listen to him read. And this elderly man I took as a character, a wonderful character, splendid character. The captain is asked to return a young girl, Johanna, to her people. She doesn't want to go back to her people. She doesn't speak English. She eats with her hands. She refuses to use shoes. On the way south, uh, they learn to trust one another and meet adversity and meet real danger together. This is Milford Creek, and it flows into the Sabinal River. On that road right over there, Johanna and the captain would have come from the north, heading south towards San Antonio. Those characters are very live to me. You know, when you get two really good characters like that that are so powerful, it just get out of their way is the principle that I stick by. Oh. When I look at a book, I look at massive contrasts. You have a man who's very educated and a bit bitter and a bit sour, and you have this young girl who's still 10 years old and full of vigor and vim. And for me, this is how I write fiction. That's what makes fiction roll forward. It's the weight and counterweight balance and, and the counterbalance.